Good morning. You're going to hear uh, a lot of stories. You, you may have already, I mean, you have heard a few stories already. But first thing I want to say is this is not a marketing event. And so you're not going to hear any product demos, any product pitches, or anything like that. So it's just going to be focused on some of the stories stories about our history, and stories from our successes, and more importantly, some of the failures. So we thought we could share some of these so that maybe it could be useful for you. So let's start off with the Zoho story itself. When Sridhar talked uh, in more detail about the Zoho story, the early days of the Zoho story, I'm going to take a slightly different role, a uh, different lens through which we look at the Zoho story. The first thing to know is Zoho is made in India. And it is not only made in India, Zoho, the global headquarters of Zoho is in India. In fact, it's Chennai. And we are based in five locations. Uh, Chennai, we are also uh, in the US, we are in two locations, Austin, Texas, and also Pleasanton, California. We have an office in Japan, China. About 2,500 employees in total. Uh, we have uh, done business in about 100, one, somewhere between 100 and 150 countries. We do have paying customers. But how did we get there? How did we get to this far? So let's look at this Zoho story through various lenses, because it's not just a theory on how things happen. There are various factors that influence the Zoho story. I thought I'll take a look at some of these aspects that, that influence the, the Zoho story. Let's get started with the product. Right? Product is the first thing. So far, we have shipped over 100 products. And, and, and we have had our share of failures, too. Probably maybe 20, 30 products failed. But we did ship them. And everything, every product thought as a lesson. But how did we get to the products in the first place? How did we decide to do products? Because back in the day, in about, say, I think around 95, 96, it's all about services in India, right? How did we decide to do products versus services? Productivity, that is the, the first thing that we, we measure. If you measure the productivity of a company, how do you measure that? It's typically measured by revenue per employee, right? So total revenue divided by the number of employees, simple. If you look at the revenue per employee figures for some of the services companies out there, they look like this. Basically, 48K per employee for services companies like TCS, Infosys, Wipro, somewhere between 40 and 60K is the range. Now compare that with the revenue per employee for the product companies out there. 700K for Microsoft, Google 1.3 million, Apple inching close to $2 billion. So that's revenue per employee difference between the services company and a product company. That's a significant difference there. So if you were to do a company, what would you do? Would you pick services or products? These may be the latest numbers today, but the difference was not, the difference was pretty much the same back then as well. So obviously, we picked products. So now that you picked the product, what product do you build, right? How do you, how do you decide which product to build? I'm not going to get into any of those details. Uh, my colleague Priya will, we have a, Priya will be talking about this particular topic tomorrow. We have a dedicated session for this. But let's just say our first product was Java-based SNMP API. Sounds pretty boring, right? Well, it made money. How many of you even know what SNMP is? That's five, six hands. OK, that's good. Well, once we started doing the SNMP API, that was back in 96, the target market was OEMs. And like companies like Cisco or Motorola, Nokia, all these companies would pick up products, and even printer companies, and embed it inside their products. So our name itself was not known. But as long as we were paid, we were happy. So we just shipped the product. And this was our initial website, I think, a couple of years later. I know it looked beautiful. 
But from 1996 to 2000, we have seen some decent success. And all these products are, were available under the name of WebNMS. We did about, I think, 10, 15 products around then. And we have had some success into printers and, and some of these uh, vendors out there. But more importantly, what happened during those four years was we gained confidence because we, had, we, ha we have been doing products out of India. We had paying customers and we had money in the bank. And that gave us a lot of confidence in building products. That was the beginning. And then in 2001, that led us to branching out and creating an alternative line of products. And that is how our second division, Manage Engine, was born. So Manage Engine is basically a suite of applications. We have about 30 plus applications in that suite currently. Suite of applications for IT departments to manage their network servers and, and all of that. And once the Manage Engine took off, this was the initial website uh, for the Manage Engine. Again, you'll see a lot of products. It's all about products. And these were downloadable products. Again, as things progressed, Again, we gained more confidence, we added more, more engineers, and we kept on developing products. And then in 2005, we, we got even more ambitious. We said, let's, let's target maybe a bigger market, because we had the confidence, we had the people. We said, maybe we'll take on a much bigger challenge. In this case, maybe applications for the entire business where any Software that any business can use. That's the, the Zoho line, and this was one of our uh, initial Zoho website. And as you notice, with Zoho, we compete with the big guys, like the Googles of the world, Microsoft, Salesforce, and on and on and on. But then we did not start off that way. We did not put together a team saying, hey, let's go compete, maybe 15 years, compete with Google and Microsoft, or 10, 15 years down the lane. That is not how, how things got started. We just wanted to keep the first priority is put food on the table, survival, right? That was the number one goal. In 96, that was the goal. But once we had some money in the bank, talent, talented people in the room, we said, let's go build other products. And that was the first thing we did on the products. And the target market eventually increased. Because the entire size of the first market, that, that is the WebNMS brand, the entire size of the market was about 100 million, if you stretch it. But then we got ambitious, and the next market was few billion. And then the Zoho is few tens of billions, if not 100 plus billion. Right? The target market, obviously, uh, the, the market we chose as a target obviously increased in size as, as things move forward. It was basically we crawled first, then we started walking after we gained confidence, and then we, we started running. And that's essentially the, the the product side of it. But then, it was not as smooth as it looked on the slide. The reality is, the, there are a lot of market forces at work during the entire, entire history. So we looked at this from the product lens. Now let's look at it through the market lens, right? In market certainly influenced the products. And in 1996, it was Java that influenced the product that we were going to do. Because 1996 is when Java 1.0 launched. And there were a lot of SNMP APIs out there, but there were none in Java. We said, OK, let's go develop, the, develop these SNMP-based products for Java. And that market created that opportunity, because at that point, the, the selling point was the cross-platform nature of Java. And that gave us the opportunity and created that opportunity. We, we, hooked on to it, and that helped us get started. So market certainly opens the doors. But then market also closes doors too, like what happened in 2000, right? We all remember the bubble burst. And here's the thing, 99% of our customers shut down in 2000. And I'm not even exaggerating here. We had about 300 optical companies that we were selling to, out of which Three survived, and those three also survived today. But 99% of our customers died in that 2000 bubble. And 
what we did was, luckily we had cash in the bank, and we started to invest all these resources, the, ta the talent we have, and invest in a different market. And that was actually how this Mana Engine brand was born, and we diversified to survive. We did not shut down the other products. The other products in the WebNMS division continued, but we started a new one, which is the, which is the Mana Engine brand. And then in 2004, there was an interesting opportunity that showed up. Because at that point, we were, their open source products were taking off. And SaaS products also started showing up. And we were deciding, we were thinking, which one should we, should we bet on? We said, let's do both. We had the resources, so let's do both. And a couple of years later, we, it was obvious that SaaS was the way to go. And that is, that is basically the birth of the, the Zoho brand. And that's about seizing the opportunity there. The market presented an opportunity, and we seized the opportunity as well. And market certainly opens the doors, closes the doors. There will always be opportunities. For example, uh, mobile, right? Mobile presented a lot of opportunity for many companies, smartphones and all of that. There are online marketplaces, online platforms, like a Google Apps marketplace could be an opportunity, a market presenting an opportunity. If you jump on it, hook onto it, that's a nice way to start. Start your business and from then on, you can figure out as, as things, things go along. And market creates and also destroys the opportunities, so you have to be closely watching them. But then those are two different lens. Now let's look at the history again, but this time through the price lens. Initially, our WebNMS products we were selling for a few thousands of dollars, each product. For our Man Engine, we were selling for a few hundreds of dollars. And Zoho, a few tens of dollars. In fact, we have a few products which we sell for a, a dollar a month. And I think we, we also have a product where you can name your own price. And all along, what happened was, the, as the size of the market increased, the price of the products came down. And obviously, volume increased. If you look at the total number of user base for something like WebNMS, the maximum number of users will probably be 5,000. For managed engine, it'll probably be 500,000. But for Zoho, well, we hope that it'll be probably five, 5 billion users, but that's the size of the market, and that's the size of the opportunity. And because the size of the market is so big, it influences your pricing, and obviously for, for Zoho, the pricing reflects that. So markets influences the products, the products influences the pricing, but there are many other aspects but the, so you have to look at, say, the people. That's another lens. If you look at the history of Zoho, we started off with, say, six people, as Sridhar mentioned this morning. But from then on, we ramped up. Now we are about 2,500 employees. And 2014 is not complete yet, so you'll see that growing. We are kind of hiring about two people every single day. And it has, we have been ramping it up. And you'll notice a, a trend here. In, after the bubble burst, you'll notice that we kind of freeze some hiring. And again, that was the survival mode and reinvention mode. So we kind of freeze that. Note that we did not lay off any people. We use the talent. It's the same talent that, moved, uh, that worked on other products as well. And again, you'll notice some slowdown after the 2007 crash as well. But then, when the size of the target market was in millions, the employee size was intense. We are less than 100 people. The size of the market was in billions. We, ha we had a few hundred people. But now the size of the market is few billions, few tens or hundreds of billions. Now we have a few thousands of, thousands of people. But there's one thing you'll notice throughout. We retained people. Do a simple exercise. When you meet any Zoho employee here, ask them how long they've been around. You'll be surprised. See, the average, say, if you look at all our product managers, for example, the average tenure is probably 10 years. They've been around with the company for 10 plus years. The reason is our employees value our values. That's an important asset to the company. But what are these values? 
right? Let's look at that, that particular lens. Let's look at the history through that lens. Throughout these 18 years of, of history, our strategy changed, our products changed, the markets changed, the pricing changed, but one thing remained intact, our values remained intact. And what are these, right? Long-term focus being one. Never started the company thinking, yeah, we, we can flip, flip it and maybe make, some, make a quick buck. If that was the case, it would have been done 10 years back, or even, even before that. But that is, we, we, re, we really want to build a long-term company, as we'll get into those details a little later. But this is a company that was not built to flip. And you'll see a lot of these companies out there, here, even here, and even in Silicon Valley, where these companies are built to flip. Create a product, get a lot of users, raise some bunch of money, and then flip. Just sell the company, and then buy a house in front of a beach and retire, right? That's a typical story. Certainly that's not us, and our people value that. And I like this, what Sridhar said, we are in business to run it, not run away from it. And that kind of captures what we think and our long-term focus. Another thing, another value is zero debt. All along, we had no debt. That helped us even back in 2000, that helped us survive and navigate that particular bubble. Engineering focus. When we think about the culture of the company, it's, it's product-centric. Like they say, it's location, location, location for some businesses. For us, it's all about product, product, and product. And then the marketing and sales come in. But we are an engineering-centric company, and you'll notice that throughout. Because until, unless you have a product, what, what do you have to market or sell? So that engineering focus also define some of our product-centric culture as well. And also, you'll not see any forced sale. If you have used or signed up to any Zoho product, you're not going to see salespeople calling you and trying to sell you something. Our model is simple. If you like it, you buy it. If you don't, you won't. It's as simple as that. But the product has to be reachable. You should be able to go online, try an application. It could even just be a, a free application. So we offer a free version of every single Zoho product out there, and you can try it. If you like it, evaluate it, you buy it, right? So we try to remove the friction there, and given, combine this with our engineering-centric focus, you'll, you'll notice that we prefer to retain the culture that way. So adding a lot of salespeople will change our culture, and we want to avoid that. Privacy, that's another core value. You're ev never, ever, ever going to see any ads in Zoho products. When we offer a free product, it is going to be genuinely free version of the product. We're not going to make money selling your information to someone else, to advertisers. Because advertisers are not our customers. You are. And all of these are some of the values of the company. And all of these are important. There are more than these. But all these values define the culture of the company. And that brings us to the last one. If you look at the, the culture lens, we define it as the Silicon Valley product culture with Indian values. That's how I would define the, the Zoho culture. We move with the speed of the Silicon Valley product company, but we have the Indian values. And that is one of the biggest assets for the company. And it is certainly an engineering-centric company, and we have uh, my friend Sridhar Iyengar, who is going to talk about the uh, product, how to create a product culture today, and he'll get into more details on how to build uh, a product culture in your organization. And it's simple, right? We value our people, and our people value our culture, and that's one of the key reasons they, they stick around. So if you notice all these these items here, we looked at all these lenses. It's not one thing that stands out. All of these are interconnected. One cannot go without the other. And that is basically 18 years of, of the Zoho story in a nutshell. Thank you.